So the other day I was contemplating ideas of what I was going to do for this video. And I was endlessly looking through my shelves in search of anything that I could make a project out of. I did begin to worry as the deadline for this video was rapidly approaching. But when I thought that all hope was lost, I stumbled across a box on top of my bookshelf. Inside were some unfinished projects, and among them was this Gundam diorama that I abandoned almost two years ago. Back then, I was unable to finish this piece as I felt that I lacked the skills and the equipment to do so properly. If you're new here, I'm Mark, and I think now is finally time to put this project to rest. So, go grab your paintbrushes, ready your armies, because you're watching. <laughs> So you're probably thinking, the bulk of the build is actually done. The part where I stopped was, after attempting to paint it, I'm going to put a few pictures up on screen that's going to show you how blotchy the paint job was before. That was using a black rattle can primer and a white rattle can primer. I then tried to use really cheap craft paints over the top, and it turned out really blotchy. And I just really wasn't happy with it got pretty down about it so it ended up going in that box. So there's not much building to talk about really. So the main thing that I wanted to discuss on this video is if you ever come to a point where you're unable to finish a project, don't throw it away. Put it in a box, put it on a shelf, leave it for god knows how long. Eventually you're going to run into the skills that you need to finish that project and make it what you believe you wanted it to be. My main motivation for putting this in a box and putting it on the shelf and not throwing it away is Gundam's expensive. And I know you're probably thinking now, well you do Warhammer now, that's pretty expensive as well. And you're right, but this is two years ago and my job didn't pay as much as it does now. So luckily for me, I'm able to afford this stuff now. And a lot of the time I buy my minis on eBay. Basically what I'm getting at is if you've started a project and you don't feel like at this moment in time you can complete it as well as you think you can or as well as you think you should, save it. You might not think that you're gonna learn a lot in the next couple of years. You're not gonna develop new techniques, but you would be surprised how much you can learn in so little time. For example, as you can see in the background, I am working on some glowing effects. And I learned this technique by watching those street artists when they do like the neon graffiti. And I wanted to kind of replicate it with this as I didn't want to install any lights. And this is kind of what I wanted to achieve back when I started the project two years ago. I think the main thing that held me back about two years ago is the fact that I didn't have an airbrush back then. And you could argue you don't need an airbrush for this. To be honest, you don't. But I felt that my hand painting at that time wasn't up to par and I needed an airbrush. So if you can afford one, get one. Honestly, it will save a lot of time on painting, especially models that are quite big like this. And you don't really need to buy any of the really expensive ones. I think this one was about 130 quid, something like that. Which, if you look at airbrushes online, some of them you're talking mega money. But I feel like this does what I need it to do. I don't need it for anything fancy, I can do everything that I need with this one. One change that you might have noticed on this model is I was missing the arm. And you might see it on the table in a minute, but I decided that I wasn't going to attach it. And I hadn't actually glued anything together at that point, so it was still quite poseable. So I decided to leave the arm off, and I super glued some wires hanging out of it, and having the model interact with itself by holding the exposed wires while standing on the other Gundam. In order to catch up on a bit of the footage, I simply sprayed the bottom of the base using Bookman's Glow, and then I used contrast paint to paint the green mech, and that was using orc flesh. And I'm now painting Barbatos using black legion contrast paint. 
I chose to use contrast paints as I was still able to see a little bit of that light that I put underneath using the white ink. It's not as visible on Barbatos, but in person if you look at it, you can actually see some of that light shining through underneath. And a lot of it's going to be highlighted through the neon effects that I'm going to be adding to the knees and to the chest. I also kind of want to use this video as a little space where I can communicate with you guys. And I really want to know what kind of videos you want to see coming from me, whether you want to see more where I'm finishing old projects, or perhaps you just want me to start new ones. I do have a few ideas, but a lot of it comes down to getting ideas from you. I want to make videos that you want to watch, and the best place for that is down in the comments. So if you've got any ideas of what you want me to do, I had somebody suggest a Plague Hound from Dark Tide, and that was on the video where I made the Beast of Nurgle, and that's been added to the list, that is something that I want to do in the future. So like I said, if you've got any ideas, anything you want to see, write it down there, and it might go on the list. As you can see I've come back with that white ink through the airbrush and I'm just highlighting all the zones that would be lit up by the light. Making sure that any surface that is pointing towards one of them lights also has a slight reflection which I can then spray more contrast paint over the top. To add some colour to Barbatos I am now spraying Blood Angels Red contrast paint through the airbrush just over those white zones that I've just added. This is to add the red glow and I'm later going to go hand painting on the inside with some pure white. I think it is actually possible to replicate this without an airbrush and that would be using a lot of different dry brushes. Slowly focusing more of the white towards the middle. I don't know how you'd apply the contrast paint without leaving any tide marks. But that's perhaps something that if you find out, let me know. Thinking about it, you could probably use a bit of water and feather out the edges or maybe use a bit more contrast medium towards the edges just so that you don't really get those tide marks as you can tell this isn't something that I've tested myself as I use the airbrush that's what's easiest for me, takes less time if you're going to be giving that a go don't try it on the main model, try it on a test piece first I would hate for my advice or my guess to ruin one of your pieces so yeah, I definitely recommend trying it on something else like a base. I'm now coming in on the other Gundam and I'm using some Griffhound Orange, I think it is. Once again, it's contrast paint, quite translucent, and you can see a lot of that detail and that light underneath. And again, I am making sure that any surfaces that are facing that way are going to be sprayed with a similar colour. Now to really make those knees pop, I'm coming in with hand painting and I'm using some pure white. I think this is White Scar from Citadel. And because I've built up those layers with that white ink in the past, it covers quite easily. And from a distance, it looks really good and it actually looks like it's glowing. I did send a few pictures to other people and they'd asked what I'd used. And they were quite surprised when I told them that it was just regular acrylic paint. From this angle you can really see that shining through. Whilst I finish painting this in the background, I'm just going to take the time to say if you think I've earned a subscription, please go down and press that button. It really means a lot. I have grown rapidly this year, as I was originally hoping to hit 300 by the end of the year, and I think I hit that in the first few days of January. So I think the goal is going to be 1k by the end of the year. Might be a bit optimistic but I think that we might get there and that all comes down to people like you going down to the bottom and pressing that button. It doesn't cost anything, it's free, you can always click off it again later. Another way that you can help out this channel is by going down and liking the video, sharing it with your friends if you think they are interested in this kind of thing and also commenting as this really shows YouTube and the algorithm that people are engaging with this video and my channel. Well there's enough of that so let's carry on with the project, we're coming near the end and I'm just painting on some lead belcher to all of the harsh edges and this is just to show a bit more battle damage. In my head this has been a pretty extreme battle 
So there is a quite bit of battle damage on this model, and more so on the one on the floor, crawling away, trying to survive. I did come in and try and do some scratches over the model, but I did find a way to make these a lot more realistic, and that's going to be coming up soon. And here we are with my special technique. This is some regular packing foam. I've dipped it in the lead belt shit and I'm slowly scrubbing it across in certain directions where I think that the metal's rubbed. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and you're gonna see how well them scratches turned out compared to the others. I made sure that I did this all over both models just to show how intense that this battle has been. Looking at the model on the ground, you can see how successful this glow effect really has been. That zone on the back, honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with it. If you've got any models that have any kind of light source, I highly recommend you try this technique. Be sure to send it to me on Instagram as well. You can either tag me in it or send me a DM. My username is at Morrigan's Creations. With the scratches all finished, I broke out the airbrush for one last time and I added some Bugman's Glow straight into it and sprayed this on all the lower parts of the models. Making sure that this looked as if the models had interacted with the environment, as this really sells the story. Making sure that I added it onto the feet of Barbatos, especially on the leg that is standing on top of the other one. And finally I came in with some homemade pigment powder which is made just using some regular chalk pastels. This is brushed liberally all over those areas that I have just sprayed, as this makes it look a lot more dusty and works really well with all the metallics. Once I'd finished with this, I then gave it a matte varnish and I called it done. So let's take a quick look at what we started with. As a whole, I am quite pleased with what I achieved two years ago, as the posing was good, the composition was quite good, but at that time in my journey I hadn't made enough progress, so let's see what we've done to improve that. So as you can imagine, I'm really happy with this piece. I'm really glad that I decided to revisit it after two years. I'd say there's been a happy accident as the matte varnish seems to be still slightly reflective. And honestly, I think that looks better to be honest. So like I said at the start of the video, if you've got something that you don't think you can finish, you don't think you got the skill set yet, I'd honestly say Put it to one side, come back to it at another time. You'd be surprised how much you can improve. I've been Mark from Morrigan's Creations, and I'll see you in the next video.